Hey guys, thanks for joining me up to the Play Games. My name is Lance, and today I'm taking a look at a brand new game coming to Kickstarter called Time of Legends Destinies. This is a new game by Lucky Duck Games in coordination with Mythic Games. It is a one to three player game that takes roughly one and a half to two and a half hours to play, and is a competitive game. So each player is going to have a destiny that they're trying to discover, and the player that is able to do this first is going to be the winner of the game. So in the game itself, this is an app-driven role-playing game where the players are going to be on an epic adventure, and based on the scenario that the players have chosen, there will be a backstory to that scenario, and then each player is going to have their own destiny, which is going to outline the different things that that player needs to accomplish in order to unlock their final, their epic final, and if they're able to complete that before any other player, then they'll be the winners of the game. So throughout the game, the players are going to be moving around the board, interacting with the map, interacting with the app, scanning different things, moving around and talking with different NPCs, and trying to discover the different clues or different things that will unlock their story. And based on the decisions the players make, both good and bad is going to impact them and impact the game as a whole, depending upon if they are doing bad things such as killing people or not accomplishing certain goals, it will impact the entire story of the game so everything is going to have consequences to it depending upon what decisions the players make and each player is going to be able to hear all the interactions and see all the interactions that every other player makes so every player knows exactly what's going on and by doing certain things you may end up helping other players so you're always wanting to pay attention to what's going on because based on what other people are doing may actually provide you with clues to help you and guide you on your path so my thoughts on this one, I found this at Gen Con and had a chance to take a look at it there and have really been excited about checking this one out. I've been a big fan of Lucky Duck Games for a while and really enjoyed their Chronicles of Crime series. So I was really interested to see what kind of new stuff they brought to the table with this one. So first off, this is a competitive game, so really interesting in that aspect. And it is going to have its own editor to it. So you, as a player, can create your own adventures. And I'm really excited about that. I've seen some amazing content created in the past with other games that have done this. And I'm really excited about that. And, and Lucky Duck giving that opportunity to the fans of the game. Uh, as one studio only can think up so many things, once this gets out to the public, people can do all, all kinds of different things. So in the end, this may end up turning out to be a cooperative game by certain players players that create new environments or new things who knows so lots of possibilities there and the other things that are really interesting with this with this being an app driven game the app takes care of a lot of the heavy lifting there's not a lot of heavy rules with this one it's very easy to get into it and play it right out of the box and with Mythic in there as well, setting the stage with the Joan of Arc universe, you have a rich environment to explore and, and find all the different things. And the miniatures that are provided are beautiful. These are really cool top-notch miniatures. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with Mythic Games and their Joan of Arc series that they put out on Kickstarter a while ago that's fulfilling, and they're going to be launching a new Kickstarter soon, those minis are amazing. They've done a really good job with those. So it's really cool to see Lucky Duck teaming up with them to incorporate some of that stuff within their game and then being able to bring a new experience to that universe as well. And I've had a great time with this so far. There's one scenario that was included in our prototypes, the howling, and the players are, are trying to find out this poor town has been infected with a werewolf and it's tearing people apart and the players are needing to figure out what's going on, who is behind this, who the werewolf is, and how to stop them. And each player is going to have different ways of doing this. Uh, with the herbalist, for example, she's trying to cure the werewolf or get the townspeople to help do a counter ritual that will help cure the werewolf. So there's each player is going to have different approaches to different things. And throughout the game, you're going to discover all kinds of interesting people to talk to and different environments to interact with and hard choices to make. And then there's also the, the luck element to it as well, where the players are going to be rolling their dice and making decisions on whether they want to use their additional resource dice to help boost their, their scores as well. And then each player is going to gain experience throughout the game where they can get new spill, uh, skill tokens that they'll be able to place in their card to make those tests easier for them as they progress through the game. So some really interesting things with this. I cannot wait to see how the Kickstarter does, as well as what the company has in store for us in the future. And of course, like I said, with that editor coming out uh, once the game releases and getting into players' hands, it'll be really neat to see how the different players create new scenarios as well. 
So of course, these are just my opinions. I'd love to hear from you guys as well. Let me know in the comments below if this is one that you guys are interested in backing. Why or why not? Are you willing to play app games? I've heard of a number of people that are critical of games that are driven by apps. So let me know in those comments below as well what your thoughts are on that. I'd love to hear from you guys and start a conversation. So as always, if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button subscribing to my channel as it really does make a big difference, helps me to continue to grow and be able to produce these videos for you guys. If you want to stay up to date on all my videos, also consider ringing that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new content. So let's head to the table and I'll show you what this one's all about. Let's start off by taking a look at the player board. So each player will receive a player board and then they're going to choose a character that they want to play as. So let's say that our player here has chosen the herbalist. So with that, each player is also going to have three tracks, the intelligence, dexterity, and power. And at the beginning of the game, the app is going to show you which skills the player is going to start with. So for example, with our herbalist, let's say that she has four, six, and 11 in intelligence. She has the four and eight in dexterity, and finally a five and seven in power. Then throughout the game, as the player receives experience points, they can spend those to gain additional skill tokens. So let's say that we want to add a skill token to intelligence. We'll choose a category and based on the number of stars in there is the number of points we have to spend to add a skill. So let's say we want to spend two tokens to add a skill in this section. So we could add one to seven, eight, or nine. So let's say we add one to seven. And then we have one point left, so we could choose to spend another point to add one to, let's say, dexterity. Throughout the game, the, based on the actions the player chooses, they're going to have to make skill checks in one of the three different areas. And the players are going to have two main dice and three effect dice. So each time they have to take a test, they're going to roll their two main dice, and they may choose to add effect dice if they want to. Now these are going to be limited, and a player is only going to get one back each round that they play. So the, they'll have to choose carefully when they want to use these. And then each player is going to roll their main dice and add up the values on there. And these are not standard dice. They're going to have values of 1 to 4 on them and not 1 to 6. So for example, with this one, let's say that we were doing an intelligence test and we rolled this. So we have four points. And so we'll check along that track and for each skill token we have, that is one success. So currently we only have one success with our main dice. But let's say we rolled an effect die as well and got another three in there. So that would be seven points. Now all of a sudden we have three successes as we have three tokens that we've met. Each player is also going to be represented on the map by a 3D model, so the players will be able to keep track of where they're at on the board. Throughout the game, the players are also going to receive coins that they can use at different locations to purchase different items, such as lock picks, or a horse, or traveling rations, an axe, rope, and all kinds of other items. Each of these items is going to provide the character with a QR code that they can use to interact with different things or ask questions about, as well as you'll notice that each player's card has a QR code as well. Throughout the game, the players are going to acquire different items that are going to give them different abilities or tests, give them bonus skill tokens on there temporarily until they use that item or get rid of it. Now, each player is also going to have a destiny, which will be... I believe on separate cards based on the scenario so that it goes in time because each of the destinies on the back of the card for this particular prototype are related to the scenario that is part of this prototype. So it's very, very intricate within the story that the player is trying to go through. And each player's destiny is going to outline the different things that that player needs to achieve during the mission or during the scenario in order to unlock their final destiny and hopefully win the game. It was a Christmas Eve you won't forget for the rest of your life. It was close to midnight when the townsfolk of Centilli heard a blood-curdling, haunting howl that rose above the snow-covered roofs of the parish. Then the wolves came. Dark, red-stained, growling muzzled on pristine white snow. There were screams, shouts, and baby cries all around. After the wolves were done with the church, 
they left. Someone saw them running towards the woods to the south, leaving dark tracks in their wake. And in the morning, the priest confirmed what all have suspected. There is a wolf in here, hiding amongst the town folk. A beast in human form. A werewolf. And Centilli only has time until the next full moon before the werewolf howls again. So at this point then you would go ahead and choose which players are playing. So let's go ahead and set up for a two player game. So we'll use the herbalist and the deserter. In each of these is going to outline where the character is going to place their skill tokens at the beginning of the game for the three different skills that they have. From here, as you can see, it's going to show how to set up the board. So we're going to start off by placing tile number six. And this one will be placed face down. And then it's going to show us the next one. So this one is going to have us place tile number seven face up. And tile number eight face down as well. Then we'll place tile number three above it. And finally, tile number 11 will go below it. And then it's gonna show us the different tiles that we're gonna play or different tokens and whatnot we're gonna place on there. So first off, we have the blacksmith, so we'll place him there. Then we have a point of interest on the inn. And another point of interest on the abandoned house. And then each player is also going to place their mini on tile number seven to start with. From here, it's going to move right into the game with the first player starting their turn. So from here, then we can choose where to go on the map. And again, the app is real intuitive. It lets you slide all over the place and move around. You can zoom in or zoom out to see the area map that you have. From there, then you can choose a, a, either to stay in the location you're currently in and investigate somewhere in there or move to a new location. So let's say we want to move over here. So it's going to ask us, are we sure we want to move to that location? We can say yes. So it's going to tell us what to do. So we would flip that location over. And again, it's going to show us how to set it up. So we have a point of interest on the tree, another point of interest on the well, and then it's going to show us to place some new tiles out. So we have tile 4 that will be placed face down. And tile 12. From here then we can choose a location that we want to interact with. So let's say that we want to check out that well and find out what's going on there. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And it says, are you sure you want to investigate the well? Yes, we do. So at this point, then it's going to give us a little bit of a backstory. So it says an old well stands by the road. Snow covers its roof and its pulley chain seems frozen. The well is deep, cold, and dark. You can hear a strange wails coming from the well as you come closer. Is it the winter wind or something else? So at this point, then you would go ahead and choose some of these actions to perform. Uh, and so let's go ahead and start off by doing a test. So we're going to come closer and listen. So then we're going to do a skill check. So again, based on our skills, so I forgot to set that up, but let me go ahead and do that real quick. So we'll say that it was on four, six, and I think 11 was hers and four and eight for Dex and five and seven, I believe for power. So at this point, then we would get our two main dice and we could choose a number of bonus of the effect die that we want to add to it as well. So I'd like to try to get at least two there. So let's go ahead and add one. So we'll go ahead and give it a roll. And we've got six points all together. So then we would have two successes. So then we'll add those two and see what happens. Was that a bark? So not too much there, and we must have needed more successes. So then we can go ahead and try the pulley. So let's go ahead and do that. And so again, we'll do our test. We'll always get our two main, and we've spent one effect dice. We could add one to it, 
So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and give it a roll and see what happens. So this one turned out really well. We got a total of 10 on that. So we've got both of these successes on there. So we'll get two. So then it says, with a strain, you managed to use the pulley to bring up the bucket. With a hound inside, the animal looks a little thin, must have fallen in the well some time ago. He's very happy you saved him and will join you in your quest. You're going to gain the item, the Bloodhound number three. So then you would go ahead and go through the cards and find the Bloodhound. So then we'll add the Bloodhound to our area. Now with that, he is going to give us another skill token in eight for power and 11 for dexterity. And this will only apply as long as we have the Bloodhound. So we could choose to sell him if we wanted to. And he also has a QR code so we can interact with our environment or ask other people questions about him or whatnot. And then the final thing, if we want to, we could ch choose to drop a coin into the well for luck. We're not going to do that, so we'll just simply end our turn. So then it's going to ask us if we want to end our turn, and so we're going to say yes, and then it would move on to the next player. And this will continue going with each player having an opportunity to take their turn, interacting with different things, moving around the map and board, trying to find different clues that are going to help them on their quest to solve their destiny. So now that you've seen all the different things, let's go ahead and put everything together and show you a couple of game rounds. Again, all of the materials I, you're seeing here are prototype materials and are subject to change and will look a lot better when the final production copy is done. Again, also the app that I'm using is a prototype app, so some of the things within that will probably change as well. So let's go ahead and jump on in. The Herbalist is going to be the first player to go, and so her turn is going to go ahead and start now. She can choose to interact with something on her board, or she could choose to move. So let's go ahead and start off by going to the inn to see what's in there. So we'll go ahead and hit the inn. And it says, are we sure we want to do there? Yes, we do. And so it says here that a warm beacon of light in Centilli, the inn is typically packed full of patrons at this time of year, but not this winter. Few people who have come here each evening prefer to sit in silence. The innkeeper whines aloud. I need to deal with the patron. The Romani traveling trader... He's supposed to return with his payment before Christmas. He travels around in a colorfully painted wagon, easy to spot. If you see him, remind him that he still owes me four coins. So at this point, then our player can choose. There's a number of different options. We can pay for a ration. We can ask the innkeeper about a card that we potentially have. We can pay him four for what the patron owes. Or we can listen to the latest gossip. So let's go ahead and ask the innkeeper about our our herbalist background maybe he knows something so we'll go ahead and click on that and it's going to have us scan the card to get the effect so we'll go ahead and do that so it says haven't you heard what i told you about the money i don't need to engage in others problems until i can solve my own maybe the blacksmith will help you he's always willing to get into trouble so from there, then we, again, we have some options to choose, or we can choose to end our turn. So let's see if we can listen to some gossip. So it's going to have us do an intelligence check, so we're going to need our two main, and we can choose to spend any number of our other dice. So let's go ahead and spend one as we're going to get one back during our, for our next turn. So let's see what we get here. Not too bad. We got a five in there. Not quite enough for two, so we'll get one success. And we'll confirm. The well at the crossroads is surely haunted. My son heard strange wailings as he walked past this morning. So that's a point of interest that we might want to see about checking out. Now, we don't really have much else that we can do at this point. So let's go ahead and end our turn. And so then it says yes. And then we're on to the deserter. So the deserter, again, would refresh one of his effect die. But he's already at max. So then we'll move into his turn. So each player is going to get to hear what the other players do and see some of the effects of that. So with the deserter now, he could choose to go off and see if he could find that well and investigate what's going on there. So he's going to go ahead and do that. We're going to go ahead and move him over to this next section. So we'll click on it and go explore it. This is going to flip this section over. And it'll have a point of interest on the tree and the well as we already saw and we'll have number four area above it 
and number 12 below it. All right, so from there, then we can investigate once we're in there. Now, let's go ahead. We have the hangman's tree and the well. So, yeah, let's go ahead and check that well out again. So at this point, it says we can come and listen closer, or we could try to pull the bucket up. So, let's go ahead and try to listen closer and see if we can get something else. So, we'll go ahead and roll our two mains. And we got seven, so we got two, six, well, we almost got two. We got one success. And so it's, the sound is unearthly. Something strange is going on here. Doesn't really tell us much, but let's go ahead and give a pull on that bucket and see what we get. We're going to go ahead and use one of our die. And we got four, so we only got one success. So you are just not strong enough. Something is weighing down the bucket, but we gain an experience point for that. All right, so that is all we can do there. And we could choose to drop a coin into the well for good luck. Why not? Let's check and see what happens. So we'll go ahead and hit that. And it says we return one coin to the stock. Then it says, quite superstitious are you, but this winter you might need all the luck you can get. You throw the coin in and hear a loud barking coming from inside. A dog in the well? Weird. And that's all we can do. So then we'll end our turn. So there's an event that pops up, and it says, Hear ye, hear ye, our liege, Sir John, is coming to Centilli to hunt the werewolf. With him are his fellow knights and the bishop of Cain himself. In just two days, these exquisite brave men will honor our humble town with their presence. So that's something that we are going to be aware of. And then it'll move back into our herbalist. She'll gain her effect die back, and it is her turn. So she could go ahead and check out and talk with the blacksmith, or she could move on. So let's go ahead and talk with the blacksmith. Why not? We're here. So we'll hit that, and we'll interact with him. So then the blacksmith's workshop is busy throughout the whole winter. The loud clinking of the hammer and the roar of the furnace make talking difficult. The blacksmith has to yell to make sure you hear him at all. And with all of this werewolf gossip, people come to me asking to buy silver trinkets for protection. Who knows, maybe they'll even work. They offer good money, but I don't have enough silver. Look around and bring me silver in any form so that I can melt it and cast talismans. So then we have some options. We can buy equipment. We can steal something from the blacksmith. We can ask the blacksmith about certain things. Or we can donate silver. So let's go ahead and ask the blacksmith about our past, see if, if he knows anything. So it says, yes, yes, I understand, but see, I have my hands full at the moment. Bring me silver in any form, and afterwards I may help ye. He thinks for a while, head northeast. The stableman at the estates may have some spare time, as Sir Jonan has taken all the horses for the hunt. So from here, then we can buy some equipment, so let's take a look at that. So it's going to tell us to create a stock for trade. So we're going to take the token here and place one here, and then place one on the board next to him, so, so we know what it is. And then we're going to create the stock, so we need an axe, we need the pick lock, a rope, and a torch. Now each one of these items is, is has a gold value in the top corner, so the axe, lock, pick, and torch are all two, and the rope is one. Why don't we buy a torch? So it's going to cost us two gold, and we'll purchase a torch. And it's going to add one value to our dexterity of ten. His helper, helpers take over, and the blacksmith walks towards you. What would you like? When trading here, you're going to use that token. And then we could go back. Again, we can ask about some other stuff. We could choose to try to steal from the blacksmith. That's really risky. Or we can just end our turn there. So we'll go ahead and stop there. And move on to our Dreserve's turn. Again, he would get a die back and his main dice. And again, he can choose to try to interact with that well again, or he could go and do something else. So let's go ahead and move on down. We'll check out this space here. So number 12 is going to be flipped over, and we'll move him in there. And then we find that we hear music and laughter coming from a row of wagons and bonfires of the remaining market. So then we have a bonfire. 
we have a point of interest. That's it. So then we can choose what to do from there. So let's go ahead and check out this bonfire and see what's going on there. So we have plenty of options. We can visit the market if we want to buy some stuff. We can spend the night dancing and drinking with the Romanians. We can ask about the French boy. Could be interesting. Or we could choose to challenge a friendly guy to an arm wrestling contest. So let's go ahead and try the arm wrestling contest. We can wager a coin. We do have a coin, so sure, why not? So we have our two main. We have, and let's go with two of those other ones just to make sure we do well here. Not too bad. So we got a three, five, six, seven. So we got both successes, so we'll give them two. And this cannot be. You stronger than most of them. Ha ha. I win some, you win more. I pay you all is fair. No, gain two coins. So he'll get two coins. And then we have some other options again. We can choose to do some drinking. We can ask. Let's go ahead and ask about that French boy and see what's going on. So, oh, this poor fellow here, you mean. He comes to us weeks ago. Yes, wounded, bleeding. No one asking about him too. Until now. And now he's gone. See? And as you turn to look at the boy again, you find that he's gone. Maybe scared of you. Huh. Poor boy. Fingers gone, but great with horses. Must have worked with horses before me thinks. So some interesting stuff there, some context that we need to figure out more about. Talks about some horses, maybe he worked at a stable, so maybe we can look around for some stables. We heard earlier that there's some stables up in the northeast, so could be some stuff there. Uh, we also heard about him losing his fingers, so there could be something going on there as well, and he's wounded and bleeding, so definitely some more interest that we have to look at from that. So let's go ahead and spend the night and do some drinking and stuff and see if we get anything from that. So we'll go ahead and use our three dice. So we've spent all of our effect die. Ugh, five. So we only got one success. Not too good. You can't help but join these merry men and women. You dance and drink all night, participating in contests, openly flirting with whoever catches your eye. You wake up in the morning not remembering much, but you gain experience for it. So not bad. All right. And then your turn is over. So again, it'll go back to our other player. And this is going to continue going, like I said, until one of the players is able to meet their final destiny. And then it'll determine how successful they are. Well, I hope this video helped you decide whether or not you want to bag Time of Legends Destinies. Like I said, I would highly recommend it. I had a really good time with it and would recommend it to anybody that is into role-playing games or app-driven games or competitive games. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Or swing by the Kickstarter's main page. I'm sure they would love to answer any questions you guys have as well. And love to start a conversation with you guys in the comments below. Let me know what your thoughts on this are, if this is one that you're looking to pick up, why or why not. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.